Welcome back. We're, we have another how-to video. We're going to show you how to do uh, vinyl flooring. This is one option that is the cheapest out of all the flooring that you can do. This is the cheapest, but it is the most labor-intensive of prep. Laying the vinyl flooring is really quick, but the prep work could take you the most time. So you have to cost out if it's cheaper to do luxury uh, vinyl planking or vinyl. In this case, vinyl was the cheapest option. We're trying to be in and out of these houses as quick as we can. So this is the option, what we're using for this house for the least expense. And I have Ken with me. Ken has been doing this all his life. Uh, one of the best uh, flooring people that I've ever worked with and will teach you all kinds of little tricks of the trade. So here's Ken. Hey guys, well, like Ron was saying, floor prep is 100% the most important when you're doing sheet vinyl. Uh, depending on what kind of vinyl subfloor you have, uh, whether if you have what, with wood uh, plywood, you got to feather out your joints. This one today we're doing a layover over an old vinyl. You got to make sure the vinyl is adhered to the floor. Any loose stuff, you got to get cut out. If you notice there's some gray stuff on the floor that is an Artex feather finish. It's the product that I like the most for feathering out floors. Um, it does multiple things for you. Now, um, once you get done going through the floor scraping and sweeping, you come over and you coat it with a feather finish. It'll show you spots that you missed. It'll fill in holes. It'll also show you if there's any kind of contaminants that are on the floor because it'll bleed through. Then I'll let you know that you got to get those spots cleaned up because your adhesive will not adhere to those areas. And so it's really important that you get it covered over with Artex, my bag, but I do make other products. Uh, some are cheaper than others. Uh, it's just my personal favorite because it's easy to work with and uh, it's a little more expensive but it's a real great product and um, yeah so the main thing once you get your uh, floor all nice and prepped um, you go base rule of thumb is always trying to find your longest and straightest wall to start off of because that's going to depict on how your vinyl lays throughout the rest of the job you want to make sure it's relatively straight because if you're in your crooked by the time you get over there make sure you're going to have your boards and they're going to be running off and that doesn't look good to the homeowner so you want to try to make sure it's straight as possible so we got kind of lucky today we got this nice big long 17 foot uh, exterior wall here that we put the vinyl up against and once you get it laid out like this the next task is you have to dry cut everything in first you got to dry fit it before you put any uh, adhesive down, which is what I'm going to start doing right now. So. Okay, so when you're cutting your vinyl in, you, you do want it close, but you don't want it so close that it's completely tight up against your, like, your toe kicks. Because when you go to fold this back, if it catches on this, you can tear your vinyl and you don't want to do that. That's a big no-no. And your basic tools that you're going to need is just a regular utility knife and a vinyl hook knife. These come in super handy for getting under toe kicks that are slow or real short. Like this one's only about two inches, so it's really hard to get your blade in there. Because you can see how my hand gets bunched up. This gives me extra length and I can get all the way to the back. So if you may notice that we have a section here that doesn't have any flooring, this vinyl comes in a 12 foot length, so a lot of times you're going to have to find yourself having to put a seam in it, which is not a big deal. Um, it has a nice little factory edge here that you can see on the flooring, the black lines. And so when you go to do this, you leave one line on, you leave, take the other one off your next piece, that way when you butt it together, it looks like the rest of the flooring. When you're done with it, then you come back with a seam kit. Uh, Armstrong makes a nice one. And you seal up your seam, and it doesn't get any water corrosion in it or dirt. Because um, you definitely, because this is obviously where we're going to have a washer and dryer to hook up, and if you have water leaking and stuff like that, because that'll have a tendency to do that on you, you definitely want to have flooring underneath it. Uh, otherwise, it'll get down into your slub floor, your drywall, it'll make a mess, and you'll be really unhappy. All right, so we were talking about that fill in the kitchen just a little bit ago where the washer and dryer go. Right now I'm getting it cut, took my measurements, gave myself a little extra. You always don't want to try cutting everything net. You always want to give yourself extra, that way you can trim it in. Because a lot of times walls aren't very square, so that's why you want to leave yourself extra in both directions, your length and your width. So I'm going to cut this puppy down to size. And then what is this thing here? This is a straight edge. 
Uh, it's a great common tool for any guy that does flooring. Uh, you use it for cutting your seams, for vinyl, carpet, uh, putting uh, control lines on floors. Um, just a pretty handy tool all the way around. I mean, I couldn't do my flooring without one, so I don't know anybody, any other flooring guy that doesn't. <laughs> His life would definitely be a lot harder. And if you're wondering why it's got this serpentine on it, um, not sure if too many guys still do that, but I remember when I first started many, many years ago, that was a real popular way for doing your carpet. They uh, thought it blended better. Um, I haven't seen anybody do it in a really long time, but they still sell them that way. When you're putting your seams together, you can, uh, what I mentioned before, how you can see there are these prominent black lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black line off of my fill piece, and then I'm going to leave it on my actual uh, main piece over there. That way when I put this together, it looks like the main floor. So you don't generally want to cut your flooring on top of your vinyl. Um, I would not recommend it unless you've been doing this for a really long time. Because um, if you cut through this, this whole piece is pretty much done. So you got to be really careful. Sometimes you don't have the option. You don't have a place to roll out materials. It's just kind of you have to roll with the dice on that one or the punches, either one. So I'm going to take the black line off of this guy. And that's what this tool is going to be used for. Once again, I'm going to barely scar this and then I'm going to use this to get rid of the material. So we're almost fitted in here. And that's what it should look like once it gets put together. It'll look like just a normal board when you get done with it so it matches everything else. The easy way to do this is to get it nice and lined up on one side. And then you can cut the puppy down and then we can start getting ready to put glue down after this. twists on you and you have pressure sensitive adhesive and you start dropping the vinyl into it it's going to turn into a huge nightmare for you so you always want to weigh it down whatever you got I got my regular carpet tools here they all weigh about 90 pounds that's a 75 pound roller so I got about 250 pounds of weight over there to keep me in place um, next thing you do is you got to get your adhesive and there's all kinds of different brands different kinds we are using a 2310 Roberts today. Um, you're going to need a trowel. The nice thing about these buckets, if you don't understand measurements and sizes on trowels, is they'll actually give you a picture on the side that'll show you what size trowel. And you can actually take your trowel notch and you can line it up to it and it'll tell you exactly which trowel you need. And so these ones are a little bit different. One's for uh, fiberglass, one's for showing your sheet model. Um, they change the sizes whether you have a porous floor or non porous, which means if this was plywood or underlayment, that's a porous floor, so you'd use a, generally a heavier notch. If you're on concrete, you'd use a smaller notch because it's non-porous. You don't want to have too much adhesive under your vinyl because it creates gas bubbles. 